Welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, and to another episode of my series, Free on Facebook, which is a series of videos in which I find things for free, often time off of Facebook Marketplace, and I show you how to repair them, repurpose them, or reuse them in another manner. In this video, I got this electric Samsung dryer that's not heating. Now, this is a notorious problem, so knowing how to fix it may help your dryer from ending up in a landfill. So if you find this video to be helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. All right, so this is the Samsung dryer in question here, but this video is not gonna be just limited to this particular model, which is, if you're curious, that model number right there. Uh, but this is gonna be pretty much applicable to any sort of electric dryer made by Samsung. They're notorious for having their heating elements go out. Sometimes they'll go out a year or two after the, the dryer has been purchased. And I've done a handful of these repairs, so I can attest to that. But lucky for us, the replacement of the heating element is not that difficult. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's get to it. The first and foremost thing to do is make sure the dryer is unplugged which should be fairly obvious because you're dealing with 240 volts. So there's no messing around. So as you can see, it is unplugged. That's the plug right there. The second thing after that is what we're gonna be doing is taking off this bracket right here. So we're gonna be undoing that screw there and its counterpart on the other side as well. All right, so after we got the brackets off, we're going to lift up the back and kind of push forward and we should be able to take the entire top off. Well, not take it off, but it should come loose. So, like so, we're going to push up and it's off. All right, so I'm gonna rotate this around so we can get access to the front. All right, so after that, we're gonna be removing these three screws. One, two, three, and then we're going to open up the door here and remove three more screws. One, two, and three down there. After those six screws have been removed, we're just going to unclip it from, we're going to unclip the door from these clips and it should just come right out. So we'll really show you what that looks like next. These, just note that these screws, these three screws are on top are a little bit smaller in diameter than the ones that come from the inside part. A little bit of prying, I think these are a little bit bent, but there we go. So after that, well, our door just kind of, um, Unplug itself from the lid, um, lid the I should say the lid lock mechanism or the lid switch mechanism. But um, if yours doesn't do that, you will have to undo this plug um, on the door as you pull this off. Um, the plug is on the under, underside of it. I can show it to you in a second here. So when you pull that door off, it's going to be a connector. Mine just kind of came off, but all you gotta do is just pull it off like that and it should connect to the back of the door. This is for the lid light, lid lock, or the lid light, I should say. There's no lid lock on the dryer, but the lid switch that turns on the light and also turns off the dryer when you uh, open it while it's running. So yeah, just go ahead and pull that off there and uh, move on to the next part. Once you've unplugged the door switch, plug right here. In our case, it just kind of unplugged itself from that. Um, we're also going to have to unplug the light um, because we're going to be taking off this bulkhead. So in order to do that, the plug of light, you just got to kind of follow this wire back. You may have to move the top back a little bit to this connector right here and then just kind of push as you pull and that should unplug that. All right, so there is actually one more plug we're going to have to undo. Um, before we take off this bulkhead, um, and that's uh, the one for the moisture sensor, so which is right here. So we're also just gonna kind of pull this one 
as we push it and it should become undone like so. So after those three have been undone, so the moisture sensor, the door switch, and the light, um, after that we could finally move and take off this bulkhead. So there's four, four, there's five screws I should say that we need to take off. So one, two, three, four, and then this should be the fifth one and we should be able to take this whole mechanism off. Uh, so let's get to it. So now we're gonna have to take off the drum. Uh, to do that, to do that um, it's not that difficult, but we're gonna come over here and we're going to um, take it off the motor and uh, by doing, before we do that, we gotta move the hydro pulley down and we should be able to take this belt off the motor. So I'm gonna try to film it at the same time that I do this. Might be a little bit difficult, but yeah. So we're gonna have to come try to get this from this angle. Well, I, okay, there we go. So I'm gonna pull this down. That loosens up the belt. You kinda pull it off the motor. Um, hopefully you were able to see that, but it is off the motor now. The idler pulley is um, in the this position now. It was up here before, so I just kind of pulled it back, took the belt off, released it. So now the belt's off. We should be able to take the drum off. And, uh, it was looped through the idler pulley and onto the motor shaft, which is back here. So let's take off the belt. All right, so we have finally have access to the heating element and the other heating components. Um, so we're actually going to test out um, which one of these components is bad. Um, pretty much it could be two, three things on a Samsung. Uh, majority of the time it's the element itself. That's what I mentioned at the start. But it could also be the high limit thermal cutoff right here or it could be the thermal fuse right here as well. Uh, and just in case you were wondering how I got that belt off earlier, this is a little bit better review. This is the idler pulley was back towards here, and it was looping around towards onto the um, motor pulley. Anyways, so uh, what we're going to do to test that is uh, we're going to unplug the heating element here and unplug the high limit thermal cutoff, just one leg of it. And there we go. And then we'll also unplug the blower motor thermal fuse right there. And we're gonna put our multimeter right here into continuity mode. So which is that right there. And this is gonna beep when there's a continuous flow of electricity. That tells us there's no break in any of these components. So as you can see when I put these probes together, it makes a nice little beeping noise. And that tells us that there's flow. So we're going to measure all three of these components and see which one is bad. Um, majority of the time, it'll be the heating element. Okay, so I've got my multimeter here. I'm going to put it on the heating element first. So, yeah, I'm going to put it one probe down here. And look at that. It's got continuity. So, chances are if you're watching this video, your heating element is probably broken and it's not going to have continuity. And I'm going to show you how to swap that out because that's what I said at the start of the video. So I'm not going to change the, um, the course of the video just because I have a good heating element because that is often the case. It's this element, it goes bad. But in this case, it's good. So I'm just going to continue. Right, that's good. I'm going to check the high limit, the thermal cutoff right here. And that's also good. So if that was bad, you'd have to replace the cutoff and also this right here which is a thermal stat. So these are just have a two screws holding them in. So you'd have, if, if this is bad, replace both of these two components um, because this is just a safety mechanism. It's not gonna go bad um, by itself. All right, so we verified that our heating element is good and our thermal high limit um, shutoff is good. So that means our thermal stat is good. So the last thing to check is our thermal fuse, which is right here. So I'm just gonna unplug that and also check that. 
Um, my meter's still in continuity mode. And if we put this over here, let me see this. So I'm not hearing a beep right there. So it appears on this particular one that the thermal fuse is indeed bad. Now, um, if the thermal fuse is bad, it's just a screw that holds it on to the other side. I can show that to you. But uh, the reason that often happens is due to ventilation issues. So um, it's just that one screw on this end right here, right there. But uh, so yeah, if your thermal fuse is bad, all you gotta do is swipe it out. And but then that's not it'll just blow again if you don't take care of the ventilation issues. So make sure you're cleaning out the filter before every use and also make sure that your vent pipe right here is clean and also going out of the house is not clogged or kinked because that'll cause your thermal fuse to blow again. But like I said, the majority of the time on the Samsung, it's notorious for this. The heating elements are bad, so I'm going to show you how to swap that out despite this um, dryer having a good heating element. So let's get to it. All right, so if you're watching this video, most likely you do have a bad heating element. So I'm gonna show you how to swap that out. First thing you'll have to do is just undo all the wires here. Um, it helps to take a picture, but um, uh, it's not really necessary because it's really kind of hard to get these messed up. Okay, so after all the wires are undone, uh, we're going to take that screw off there and take that screw off there. And we should be able to just pull off the heating element. So when it comes to replacing the heating element, um, Amazon sells the, it's like a $30 package where they have the heating element, the thermostat, and the high limit. And honestly, there's a lot of, I've read a lot of reviews about it. And most people are positive on it, and there's some enthusiasts, you know, who are like absolutely saying, saying stay away from it, order order the original parts and whatnot. I've put plenty of those in there, never really had any issues. So if you want to save yourself some money, still get to do a good job, just do all three of these components at the same time. So the heating element, thermostat, and uh, the high limit. And so basically what we've got to do is uh, we're going to take off the one screw that's holding on this portion of the heating element, two screws for the thermostat, two screws for the high limit, and then also the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws um, that are holding on this casing on the heating element as well. That will let us get access to the element itself. So let's remove all of those screws. Casing should just come right off, or at least flip over enough. There we go. There's the casing. You'll see that these tabs right there are bent up. What you'll have to do is get a needle nose plier and bend those to the, pretty much make them parallel to the spade right here, and that'll allow you to pull these out. So I'm gonna do that next. So we had to make those, bend those straight. I did put the screw back in on this insulated piece just because it was a little bit easier to um, pull that back without this piece moving around. But your new piece may come with a new one of these, so. You can change that out if you like. But that's how your heating element will look when it comes in from Amazon or wherever you buy it. And if you have a broken one, the old one will probably have a break in there somewhere. But this one was actually pretty good. No breaks anywhere in good condition. I'm, it's probably not that old actually. So to replace that is pretty much everything in reverse. I'll show you how to um, assemble the heating element real quick uh, but other than that it's just putting everything back together so let's hypothetically let's imagine this is your brand new heating element these will be absolute these tabs will be straight 
you could stream mine are not that straight because I, this is the used one, but uh, let's just imagine they are straight. So you would kind of put it on to here and uh, put this through the slots of that insulated piece. Like so. And put that one there all the way through. And what it looks like when it's all the way through and then you would just bend these things back up and I'll show you what that looks like all right so that's what that looks like um, I bent the top one up and I bent the bottom one down as you can see right there you try to push on these as hard as you can they are not going anywhere all right, so then after that, it's pretty much just assembling everything back together. I can get a little bit tricky to mount, to line up these holes, because uh, your heating element will sometimes want to recoil back a little bit, but it's not that bad. You're just gonna line up these holes right here with the top of the um, casing for the heating element, like so. And uh, just make sure everything's Lined up, you may have to pull this one way or another a little bit, but uh, yeah, then screw everything back together, including the thermostat and the high limit. So now it's back to together. Um, after you get a couple of the screws lined up, um, a couple of the holes lined up and you get the screws in there after that it comes back um, together pretty nicely and not too bad after that um, so that's what it kind of should look like um, one test I do like to do um, just because I like to be really thorough um, is to make sure that the heating element is not grounding out against the casing of the element so what I do, what I'll do is uh, I'll just get my multimeter once again and to put it into uh, this continuity mode and to make sure I just put one of the probes on the heating element and put one on the casing make sure it's not touching because that could be causing the heating element to short out and it could all just remain on the whole time if that's happening because as you can see it's not happening I can change the probe to the bottom one still not so it tells us it's not grounding out to the casing. So that tells me that I installed this thing correctly. And I'm just gonna make sure it's, I didn't break it while I was installing it. So that's good. Still has continuity, as does the high limit there. So that's basically how you fix a Samsung washing dryer that's not heating. And that's how you replace the heating element as well. So from there, all you'd have to do is put this whole thing back on, put the two screws that hold it into place, and then put the drum back in, put the belt on the idler, through the idler onto the motor pulley, put the bulkhead back on, then plug in the moisture sensor, the after, and then also the light. Then after that, you'll put the Dry, dryer door on and plug in the door switch then you'll put the top on and screw in the two screws from the bottom from the back after the top has clipped on to the dryer and that's basically how you how to do it i won't walk you through the mundane steps of putting it back together because it's exactly how you took it apart for the sake of making this video longer than it already is so if you found this video to be helpful make sure you hit the thumbs up sign